we can see that that's what people before they died, back the others who were still alive, as I mentioned before, that uh, if you survive, make sure that you tell our story so, so that we will have a voice. We are the voices of six million who have who perished without a name, without a uh, burial ground, without anything. And we have to tell the world because if we don't warn the world that this can happen again, it can happen to any people in the world, uh, white, black, the colored, any nation, then it can, if we're not vigilant, then it can happen and will happen again. And as we just have to look around the world, it's not nuts. I think it's in the, the world is in the worst condition I can remember since I'm an adult. And what's happening everywhere in the world. And uh, I think it's important to remind the world that uh, anything can happen. And you have described this as a responsibility, but when did you feel the need to actually speak out about your experiences? The first time I spoke was to a school in Melbourne when they started to learn in Australia. They started to learn about the Second World War, uh, the Second World War history, and of course the Holocaust came up, and then it was the first time that people heard about it. And since then, we haven't really, I haven't stopped. I didn't have, and I'm a volunteer at Yad Vashem since we came to Israel in 1998. We came to Israel to live there. And uh, I immediately volunteered at Yad Vashem as a guide and as a um, give testimonies. And uh, I think it's very important. People want to know because there, there are so many negators of, his, of the Holocaust that uh, and not all the survivors can speak. My son-in-law's got an auntie who was, went when she was very young from, Poland, from Warsaw to Auschwitz and she can't even speak to me. All the years she lived in Canada after the war, she has no children. I don't know what happened to her, whether it was a coincidence or something that happened to her. She never ever uncovered her, her wore sl short sleeves because she didn't want her number to be seen. And now that she lives in Israel, she's sort of more relaxed about it, but she won't talk to me. You have said that not a day goes by without remember those horrors. So how do you cope? Because it must have been extremely challenging at times when you were living these experiences. Yes, it was. Um, I, I don't know how we survived. I must tell you honestly, I don't know how we survived. I don't know how we survived the deprivation, the torture, and I don't know how we survived. We were caught on my eighth, uh, tenth birthday, the eighth of October, 1944. So it was right at the end, only, only two months, and it was freezing there. There was snow, and we lived in those rags. I had nothing on my feet. I had rags on my feet, managed to get rags. I don't know how we survived. I've been back to Auschwitz several times, even at that particular time in January. And we dressed, you know, like, uh, like where we going, to Auschwitz. And uh, it's, we were freezing. I don't know how. I think it must be something. Maybe, look, I'm a religious person, always have been, never lost my faith. And maybe that's what God saved us. Whether, why? He, didn't save all of us, that's a theological question that nobody can answer, certainly not. But I've never lost my faith, not even for one moment. You're going to be addressing an audience tomorrow here, so what message would you like people to take away with them? I have to tell it to the next generation, who will then tell it to the next generation, not because we want to be heroes, but because we have to guard against it happening again. As Naomi said, which I forgot to say, I mean, I didn't think of it, to be honest, that there were six million Jews, but there were millions of other souls. Uh, and uh, I will be talking about what happened in Auschwitz, more than, you know, generalization, but how I survived the war. Uh, the war the, you have to be diligent, and, and even when it's a small thing, we should know that small things become big things, and we, the world has to... We have to do something, otherwise the world will be destroyed the way it is now.